we've we've heard that Joe Biden has approved the plans for the F-16 aircrafts. What's your reaction and what will it mean for the war in Ukraine? Well, I think it's a, a, the correct step. Um, it's come rather too late, to be honest, because these F-16s won't arrive for several months. The pilots will need to be trained and therefore they won't play any role in the current or the, the prospective uh, counteroffensive that Ukraine might launch in the next uh, weeks and months. So it's not going to change anything in the short term. But what the Americans are saying is that it will boost the air defences of Ukraine in the longer term, so that once this conflict has, has found some sort of resolution, they will be in a position to defend their sovereignty better when they're provided with F-16s aircraft. So a good decision, but one that's come several months too late, in my view. That sounds a lot too late in your view, then. If you're saying that this is too late to help the war in its current form at all, this is more for an, an aftermath if indeed we get there. I mean, it depends how long this conflict lasts, of course, but the current uh, or the prospective counteroffensive, certainly the F-16s will not play any role in that. And what do you think then the immediate role will be of the Russians watching on? I think the Russians are in a difficult position, frankly. They know that, uh, that, that Ukraine is getting a lot of more weaponry um, from the West, that Ukraine is preparing now for... Uh, this counteroffensive. They don't know when it will come exactly and they don't know where it will come exactly. Um, and they're desperately digging in in their positions and trying to build up the number of troops. But the reality is that they will probably be able to hold off uh, a major counteroffensive uh, for several months. And that may be enough for them to freeze this conflict into next year. But basically, they're on the back foot. If you'll recall several months ago, we were talking about either side making a counteroffensive this spring. Now all the talk is about Ukraine, not about Russia, because Russia is simply not in a position to make further territorial gains in Ukraine. And um, it's really interesting exactly you say that. We were talking to Serhil Ploki on the programme yesterday, saying this isn't the Russian, de describing it as the Russian invasion of Ukraine, the Russian war in Ukraine anymore. This is, he describes it, the Russo-Ukrainian war, because it's changed very much from what it was at the start. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, President Putin, if you recall, was talking about a special military operation, and he's still talking about that. He obviously thought that it would only last several days, um, and it very nearly did end within several days. But because of the heroic resistance that the Ukrainians put up and protected Kiev from falling in those very early days of the conflict, Russia has not been prepared for the sort of war that they have unleashed. So it's absolutely right to talk about a Russia-Ukrainian war. And what has happened at the G7 in Hiroshima uh, in the last 24 hours is that the big Western countries have committed to supporting Ukraine in the long term. And the decision on the F-16 is a symbol of that long term uh, military support uh, for Ukraine. It's critical there, though, that you use the term the Western countries. <clears throat> really importantly, President Zelensky is going to be confronting those who have not yet shown such commitment. He's going to be confronting Brazil and India at the G7. They chose not to back sanctions against Russia. How likely do you think he is to get to, to change their minds, to persuade them? And how much difference could that make? Well, it would make a huge difference, undoubtedly, because it would greatly strengthen the isolation of Russia in the international community. Because all the economic sanctions, and let's not forget that the G7 has announced more economic sanctions um, this weekend, a ban on diamonds, aluminium, etc., coming from Russia and more companies and individuals um, being sanctioned, but those sanctions are not having the sort of dramatic economic impact that the West would like because there are countries like India, like China, like Brazil, like South Africa that are enabling Russia to diversify its exports and therefore to avoid the worst effects of sanctions. Now, this is a valuable opportunity for President Zelensky to speak directly to to, to Modi, to Lula of, of uh, Brazil, and say to them, look, this is a fight between autocracy and democracy. And if you are democratic countries, as you claim to be, then you ought to be supporting the international uh, rule of law and the sovereignty of Ukraine. 
So it's a very valuable opportunity for Zelensky to talk face to face to these leaders whom he has not seen face to face until now.